Good afternoon, my friends. It is a beautiful weekend. Had a little rain, but now the sun's shining. A little windy, but I'll take it when it's in the 60s and 70s, anytime. I hope you're having a good weekend. I'm going to tell you a story. This video is about two men that walked with Jesus in much different ways. One actually was with Jesus for his entire ministry. And the other one, well, he had a different experience with Jesus. And I'll tell you about both of them in just a minute. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together where we can discuss these two people that were with your son, Jesus, when he was walking the face of the earth, doing his his bidding, doing his work, doing his teaching. And the most important thing he did, Lord, was giving his life as a ransom for our sin. He was the propitiation for our sin. And we're thankful for the beginning of Christianity, on the moment he was risen from the dead on Resurrected Sunday. Thank you, Lord. Thank you and thank you again. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm going to talk about two apostles of Jesus Christ today. One who walked with him in his earthly ministry, Judas Iscariot. And the other who went about doing God's business, but he never met the human Jesus, but he met Jesus on the Damascus Road. Yeah. Saul of Tarsus meets Jesus Christ. What a meeting that was. Well, let's start out with Judas. Judas was a necessary apostle. God called 12 men to be apostles. Good men, with the exception of one. One was a devil, Jesus said. Yep. One was a devil, and that was Judas Iscariot. And it says that in John chapter 12 and verse 6. Read it. The 12 men that were called were good men, Andrew and Peter, James and John. Four really good men that happened to work together and, and had their own fishing company, along with Zebedee, the father of James and John. But then God called Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, that's four more, so that's eight. And then he called James, the son of Alphaeus. And he called a man that had several names, Labius, whose surname was Thaddeus. That made ten. And then Simon, the Canaanite, or Simon, the Zealot, and then Judas Iscariot. Judas was a treasurer of the apostles, and he was a thief. That's also in John chapter 6. You need to read that whole chapter. You'll get, you get the idea of who Judas Iscariot really was. It's hard for me to talk about him. I, I want to be fair. Um... But he lied, he cheated. The Bible says he was never born again. He was never a true Christian. And he betrayed, treacherously betrayed Jesus with the kiss of death. we said that many times in the past few weeks. Now here was a man, this is most interesting. Here was a man that walked with Jesus, he talked with Jesus, he heard Jesus preach, he heard Jesus pray, 
He heard Jesus sing. He laughed with Jesus, cried with Jesus, walked to many different places with Jesus. And when the chips were down, he traded 30 pieces of uh, silver for giving up Jesus Christ to the soldiers in the Garden of Gethsemane. Folks, it's one thing to be a liar. It's one thing to be a cheat. That's not good. Neither one of those is good. But when you're a snake in the grass, when you're a follower of Satan in disguise, when Jesus was at the Lord's Supper and he said, one of you is going to betray me. And they said, well, who's it? who is it? They were all looking around. And he said, I'm going to put this bread in the sop and then I'm going to give it to the one. And he put it in and he gave it to Judas Iscariot. And he told them, go and do what you need to do quickly. And Judas Iscariot left the Lord's Supper. You know the story very well. Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. His apostles were tired. They were taking a nap. But here come the soldiers. Everybody woke up then. Peter cut off Malchus's ear and Jesus healed it. And Judas put the kiss of death on his cheek and they arrested him. Now when Judas realized the full impact of what he had done, he took the 30 pieces of silver and went back and he threw it at the people that gave it to him and he said, you're going to murder an innocent man. And then if, instead of asking forgiveness and re being, repenting of his sin, he went out and hanged himself. He hung from a tree until his body finally fell down and then his bowels spilled out in a field that was bought with the 30 pieces of silver that he got for betraying Jesus Christ, the living Son of God, our Lord and Savior. People have asked me many times, do I feel sorry for, for Judas? Well, there's a part of me that You've got to have some kind of humanity. I feel, I feel bad for, for the fact that he did what he did. But he betrayed God. He betrayed Jesus Christ. He stole money from Jesus and the other apostles. Well, that all after it's all said and done, that had to happen because Jesus had to go to the cross for you and I to be able to go to heaven because he was going to wash away our sins. He was going to be our atonement, our propitiation. Oh, yes. He did it for you and he did it for me. And he did it for billions of other people. But they will not call upon his name. They will not receive him. They will not become born again. The story of Judas Iscariot is a very difficult one. Jesus said it would have been better if he had never been born. And Jesus himself said he was a thief. Now let's go to Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus learned from the very best minds that the Pharisees had at, at the time he was a young man. He studied hard. 
and he was a ruthless proponent against Christianity. Saul of Tarsus went after Christians. He hated Jesus, and he hated all Christians. He was there when Stephen was martyred. He watched that. Here we have Judas Iscariot starting out seemingly pretty good. The apostles kind of liked him. And it looked like he was doing a good job. And he was a snake in the grass. On the other hand, Paul started out hating Christ. Said it right out loud. He said, I'll get papers and I'll arrest you Christians and I'll put you in jail and I hope they murder you in prison. I hope you die in there. Oh, he was ruthless. Well, God has a way of choosing some strange people to become apostles. But on the Damascus Road, with papers in hand, Saul of Tarsus was going to go, and he was going to get some Christians in Damascus. But he never made it there as Saul of Tarsus. Because on the way, he came face to face with Jesus Christ. A bright light shone all around him. Those that were with him, they could hear something going on, but they couldn't see it. He said, Lord, who are you? And he said, I'm Jesus, the one you persecute. And he made Saul of Tarsus, who was going to become Paul the Apostle, blind. He went to town to a street called Straight. And one of God's people, Ananias, was going to go and lay hands, even though he didn't want to, he was going to lay hands on Saul of Tarsus, and he became the Apostle Paul. He became filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit took him out into the Arabian desert for three years and taught him the gospel of grace and the things that he need to, needed to know. And Jesus made it clear to him, you will suffer for what you've done. And he did. Shipwrecked, snake bit, beaten, beaten, and beaten again. Whipped, flogged, punched. They spit on him. They kicked him. He had a tough life. But I'll tell you one thing about Paul the Apostle. He was tough. He went on several missionary journeys and... He told the story. He worked with Barnabas. He worked with Timothy and Titus. He worked with John Mark. He worked with Silas. The great story about the Philippian jailer, that was Paul and Silas. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And the whole family of the Philippian jailer got right. Yeah, that was the kind of ministry Paul was going to have. Wow. In 60, I believe it is 66 and 67 AD, both Peter and Paul died for Jesus. Paul, history tells us, was beheaded. And Peter was crucified on an upside-down cross. Judas Iscariot, a snake in the grass. Saul of Tarsus, seemingly a snake in the grass, turned Apostle Paul, wrote 13 books in the New Testament, taught about love, taught about light, taught about everything good coming from Jesus. He taught us about the rapture. He taught us about the second coming. Yeah. Yep, he was much like John in regards to prophecy. He knew prophecy very well, and so did John. Well, 
Very seldom do I get a chance to preach a video on Judas Iscariot, Saul of Tarsus turned Paul the Apostle, all in the same video. Uh, the video world is great. About the middle of this week, we're going to continue with the life of Christ. And I'm going to give you, I've given you an introduction to the people in the New Testament. On Wednesday of this next week, I'll give you an introduction to the life of Christ. And then we're going to break it down. And if it takes a long time, it takes a long time. But we're going to study each individual thing that he did. So that when you get through, you'll have it all on video. You can watch it anytime you want to. And it'll be there for you. God is good. God is great. And God is eternal. And he loves you. Have you ever been a snake in the grass? Have you ever been somebody that shows themselves on the outside to be a man or a woman of God? But the inside's not right? You know, there's a lot of people like that. And you can change that in a heartbeat, in a blink of the eye, in a snap of the fingers. You can get on your knees and say, Jesus, turn me around. I want to be your Lord, or I want to be your, your, in your family of God. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. Please come into my heart. You do that, and he will come into your heart. Take it from an old man that stutters sometimes. Take it from an old man that's been through, the, the, been through it all, and then some. Jesus, he is the answer. There's no one else that can help you for eternity. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let us pray. We're so thankful, Lord, that we can come to you in prayer, and we're thankful for the video on Judas and Paul. We're thankful for the things we learned, things we discussed, the things we were reminded of. Lord, help us to walk the true path. Help us not to be snakes in the grass, saying one thing one day and another another day. No, help us not to do that, Lord. Keep us on a straight and narrow path, and we'll give you the praise and the glory and the honor you so richly deserve as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You have a wonderful Lord's Day. Praise God in church, and I'll see you on Monday, God willing. Bye-bye.